the day. Thank Thanks you so much. So let's go ahead and get all ready here for Atomic Desktops. Timothy, I'm going to go ahead and bring you on up to the main stage. Hello. Hey, hello. Hey, folks, how are you? No, no. We don't need to show this one right now. Uh, not this one? OK. <laughs> uh, I see a couple here. Uh, so we'll. There's when did you upload the slides? Is this yes? Is this okay. The slides, the slides are already here. Excellent. How's, how's the mic volume? Everything good? Yep. Volume sounds good. Audio is good, and I can see you clearly on video. So I think the stage is all yours. Perfect. Thank you very much. I'll hand all right. It over to you. Oh, hey, wait, everybody. That's, that's the wrong one. <laughs> all right, folks. Uh, welcome, welcome. How oh, I do a switch on this here. Um, so, hey, so let's talk about Fedora Atomic Desktops and um, what's new for this Fedora 40 release. So, I'm Timothy Ravier, I'm the Fedora Atomic Desktop Engineer. So, let's first look at what's new for this release. Yeah, this works perfect. Uh, so, the first thing that you might have noticed is that we've changed the name. We changed the name for the group of the Fedora Atomic Desktop, for the group of systems that are made. Uh, using RPM with three or three technology. And we are now calling them Fedora Atomic Desktops. So this is an old name that came from the previous Fedora, um, the previous project Atomic uh, project, uh, and that we are now repurposing, but just for the desktops. We're not bringing the server side of things. They keep their names. Uh, we just use that for the desktops. Uh, so we we are official. We've been approved by the council, and um, the name is for the group of the desktops. But if you look at Silverblue and Kinoi, they will keep their name at least for now. And the two uh, other editions, you know, two other variants that we have, so one is Sway based and one is Bungie based, are moving from their code names to the more classic Fedora Sway Atomic and Bungie Atomic names which is now pretty explicit. So no confusion anymore. All right. And first, before we get into what's fun, we have to go through this uh, small detour here about bootloader updates. Uh, if you know a little bit about the internals uh, of Fedora Atomic Desktops, you might know that the bootloader is not updated on Fedora Atomic Desktops. Uh, I could say it's not updated yet because we're working on it. It's, it was supposed to happen for Fedora 40, but there were a couple of things missing, a couple of bits in BootUpD, a couple of bits in Anaconda. We're trying to get everything ready, but it didn't land. So uh, we're hoping we will get all the fixes ready for Fedora 41. And so uh, then we'll get uh, bootloader updates available for everybody and, and much easier to do. Uh, so we have a couple of issues in progress, and uh, if you're impacted by this, so if you have a system using Secure Boot, for example, and it doesn't boot with the newer kernels or uh, yeah, the newer kernels in the system, you will have to run some form of manual workarounds. Everything is in the link here, and the slides are already linked on the Fedora uh, release party page. All right, so now the things that are cool. What's new in Silver Blue? First, Silver Blue comes with all the great stuff that is in Ferrari Workstation 40, so the GNOME 46, please, and all the work that he's run, done around that. I link you here to the two main um, articles, the articles on the Fedora magazine and the one on Christian's blog, uh, which are very detailed and explain a lot of things around that. More specific to Silver Blue is that we made a change in Fedora 40 for Silver Blue is that we no longer uh, overlay the lang pack packages for your language. So if you are using a non use language, which is for most of us, uh, you will um, on on first boot, you used to have this link pack, uh, language installed by um, GNOME software and installed as a layered packages. And it kind of defeats some of the purpose of bringing you an image-based system. And so we decided to remove that. We took a look at what exactly this brought. And the main thing that you might miss are like the dictionaries, uh, for example. Uh, but it's 
only for the applications that are running directly on your system, so not the flat tags. So you may or may not miss it. Uh, it's up to you if you want to get things back. Well, it's, it's not going to be removed uh, from your current system. Uh, so you will have to manually remove it if you want to, to, to get rid of it. Uh, but for new installation, it won't get installed by default anymore. So uh, if you truly need the packages, you can always layer them. That's not a problem. Um, but it, it won't trigger that automatically. The most important thing is that if you use flat packs, uh, GNOME software, GNOME in general, GNOME the settings page is now capable of configuring the language for flat packs. So you should get all the dictionaries on the correct language, uh, the translation for your flat packs as well. So that should work now. So make sure to check the flat pack configuration uh, if you're seeing various things or if you're missing dictionaries. One other thing that is missing now is kind of missing is the uh, localized man pages on the system. So if you have man pages translated in your language, they are no longer installed and you will have to install them in the toolbox, for example, to take a look. So, all right, let's look at Kinoite now. What's new in Fedora Kinoite? Well, we have Plasma 6. You might see a presentation from earlier uh, for the, um, and the presentation from Neil uh, in, the, in the Fedora release party about Plasma 6. So all the goodness of Plasma 6, the frameworks, the rebase on Qt 6.6, uh, the new gear apps, everything is in there. And we also made a Fedora article that is uh, available on the Fedora magazine. Kinoite is an image-based system. And in the image, we removed all uh, support for X11. So now Kinoite is Wayland only. Of course, you can always run all of your legacy X11 application using X Wayland. So that's, uh, for most folks, that's going to be perfectly fine. If you truly, truly, truly need an X section, there are options. If you have like NVIDIA hardwares, I recommend that you probably wait a little bit to get the latest NVIDIA ones, uh, latest drivers that are going to happen at some point, which will fix issue with wetlands and all of those things. But there's work around if you truly need one. But give it a try. Give the wetland session a try before switching back to x Um We are now shipping uh, small set of KD application uh, built in Fedora Infra, built as flat packs, and so installed, included into the ISO, included into the default installation. They will be installed for you. We don't have a mechanism yet to install application on updates. So if you're updating uh, Fedora 39 Kinoite desktops, uh, uh, well, you won't get those apps. You will have to install them manually from the Fedora remote. Otherwise, if you look at the flat hub side of things, so it's, this is not Fedora, but it's uh, where Cadio Upstream pushes all their applications. Uh, we're maintaining that as well. And uh, most of the applications there are already Qt6 based. And so you can get all of the goodness there as well. All right, let's look at Sway Atomic, the, so the new name for Fedora Cerisea. And Sway Atomic, so the list here is pretty small because Sway Atomic is uh, kind of like a more lightweight uh, version, a more lightweight desktop. There's uh, not so much things. It's Wind first and only. And uh, they came with the latest 1.9 Swift release. I've been told that all the goodness will be in the next one. So make sure to hold on to uh, and wait for the next one to come. This one is a general uh, fix uh, and improvement one. And then we have Fedora um, Budget Atomic, which was Fedora Onyx before. Uh, it comes with the latest release in the Budget series of uh, the 10.9 release series. It has progress. Uh, it made they made progress toward Wayland support. So I don't think they're they're Wayland ready or Wayland fully ready yet. But it's this this progress progress around that. They improved Bluetooth handling uh, and the made a lot of uh, backboard for fixes, uh, especially for Fedora users. And uh, so we have developer, we, one of the developers part of the Fedora community, they are officially supporting this variant uh, and Bungie in Fedora. And uh, so they get all the nice stuff uh, for us as well. 
If you want to know more about the budget development and all the things, I, we recommend that you follow their blog, which where they write all the release notes and the updates about development. So that's basically what's new for this release. And now we can take a look at what's next because we get a good bunch of things that are pretty cool happening and happening right now and in progress uh, that we want to showcase uh, and take a look at uh, for, for what's coming next. So the first one, as I mentioned at the beginning, is boot up D support. Hopefully we'll get that landed in Fedora 41. We're fixing one of the some of the remaining issues that we have. And once we get that, we'll land that in Fedora 41. We might even get that back to Fedora 40, given how critical this is sometimes. Uh, but hopefully that, that will do. Um, so yeah, hopefully we'll get that ready for Fedora 41. The other cool new thing that is happening right now is the Fedora bootable containers initiative. You might have heard about that. Um, this is kind of like the successor to what we used to call the OS3 native container projects. The fact that we're uh, moving uh, into using containers as a distribution format, as the uh, yeah, distribution customization format for all of the OS3 RPM three based systems. So I've linked here uh, the links to the initiative, the uh, explaining uh, more details about things and the new issue tracker, which like tries to center around the Boosy bootable container projects and, and all of the uh, all of the um, information around that, all of the repos and code around that. And one of the first thing that is uh, going to happen and to change for all the atomic desktops uh, is that we're going to bring DNF back essentially into the atomic desktops. So the idea is that we'll progressive move uh, from using RPM3 to using DNF and Bootsy to manage the containers and to manage the applications on the packages on your systems. So we'll add functionality to DNF, add, add logic so that DNF understands that it's running in image mode, that it's running an image-based system, uh, and that it needs to manage things differently from what it is doing right now on uh, package mode Fedora. And so that's proposed for Fedora 41. Uh, it needs to be face code accepted and obviously but well, that's like one of the first steps that we want to have it makes all sort of things uh interesting such as like you will quickly be able to install packages live on your system uh you make a temporary writable overlay over slash user you can type dnf install command and essentially if it's not a kernel or a kernel module it will just work maybe even a kernel module could work but just like you cannot install live kernels. That just doesn't make sense, but everything else uh, will just work. So debug packages, for example, debug info or development packages, anything that you want to add live to your system to fix a thing, try out something else, uh, it will be, uh, it will kind of be uh, back essentially because we have to, we will have to know now. So this is just the first step. There's plenty of stuff to do this, uh, it's kind of of a big sweet, big big shift uh, in direction in in the projects. So in the it brings Bootsy as an, another tool that is being introduced here. It's close to RPM3, but it's doing things differently. Everything right now relies still on OS3, so it's still uh, the core here. But yeah, moving to containers, moving to to new tools, uh, it's a lot of things, and I've written down kind of like a roadmap around what potentially needs to happen, uh, where we want to, where we can take things, what needs to be done before we can move things, etc. We've been building, so uh, Fedora Atomic Desktops as container images for while now in Fedora, but they're not yet published officially. Uh, the, the ones that are published are kind of like unofficial uh, images we build on, on GitLab CI Infra. Uh, but yeah, it's it's everything is in progress still, um, but it's it's getting it's getting ready for uh, for an upcoming release. Alrighty. 
Um, another thing that we are working on, this one for Fedora 41 release, uh, is unprivileged updates. So the idea is that when using when you're using uh, Fedora Atomic desktops, the updates are safe. They you're supposed to not be able to break your system when you do an update. So um, the triggering an update by itself is safe, and we want people to update as freely as they want, as often as they want, uh, on their own schedule, um, without any constraints, essentially. It's, it's like the main goal of things. We even want they to be automatic. So the idea is that we are removing the, some limitations, some constraints around who can trigger updates on the system. Uh, we'll make them fully unprivileged. So any active user, so yeah, like you still need to be a user logged into a session, uh, but you will be able to trigger an update without any privileges. Um, and yeah, that's like the the main one. It's it's kind of a step toward making the truly unprivileged session be able to do everything on your system without needing root access. The second side of this one is that we are tightening the rules around what administrators can do on the system. So if you're an administrator, you can still run everything via sudo. That doesn't change. You will still run things as root and get all the permissions. You can do everything. But like we are removing some bits and pieces, as like changing kernel arguments and all the things that were until up until now like free for all administrators, no password asked, and we're moving that behind the the pull kit password or the sudo gating essentially. So. This one is a change in progress, uh, and uh, it, or, or as just like the previous one, it's pending FESCO approval uh, before we can fully get that in. But that's planned for Fedora 41. And how? In here, I want to get a small shout out to our friends in the Universal Blue Dufin Bizarre Aurora projects because they are doing super great work. They are doing in their projects what cannot be done in Fedora for various reasons, some of them are legal reasons. And so they are building super nice experience on top of the work that we do in the Fedora Atomic Desktop. So do check them out. Uh, they are no considered, they consider themselves to, to be generally available for the Universal Zoo and Bluefield images. And the BISAT one, which version 3.0 in Fedora and based on Fedora 40. I won't go into many details because they have a talk right after me or a little bit after. So you will get all the all the goodness there. They also introduced a new Burns, uh, Aurora, which is based on Fedora Kinoite. One nice thing is that we got, I finally managed to get my hands on an Apple MacBook. And so we are, we have started uh, the education work and the investigation work to make an atomic brand of Azai Linux. So right now we have, I have one running uh, right next to me. And um, so we got like the basics running and we do, we have to do all the integrations with Kiwi. You've seen Kiwi in the just previous pre presentation uh, where David explained how they build uh, Fedora cloud images with Kiwi. And I'm looking at doing the same to build the uh, Sahi Atomic remixes uh, using Kiwi. One thing interesting with that work is that Kiwi has support for live ISOs and support for creating pre-installed disk images. And so uh, once we get all of that in place, essentially, we probably get that support as well for all the Atomic editions that we have right now. So. Uh, hopefully, we'll get live uh, ISOs for Fedora Silverblue, etc., and uh, also pre-installed images that you can run in clouds, uh, let's say cloud workstations with a GPU or something, or if you want to make a gaming PC, a remote gaming PC, or things like that, maybe that that will likely be possible once we get all of that in place. And that's it. That's it for what's coming next. That's already a huge list. Uh, and uh, if you want to get a, help us get that happen, uh, there's a lot of ways you can help us uh, contribute. Uh, I have listed here all the places uh, where we can, if you can find us. Uh, know that the Federal Atomic Desktop SIG is very much like an overarching SIG. Essentially, we're a group that 
regroups all the thing or regroups all the developers or the contributors from other desktops. Uh, so uh, we try and make something work for everybody. Uh, the idea is that we share as much as possible and uh, while well, letting every desktop be its own. Like I'm not going to tell the Sway folks what they want to do on their atomic uh, variant. It's it's up to them. I'm here to make it happen, essentially. That's the idea. And so like every desktop at its own and we, we make sure that everybody feels at home uh, on the in the atomic desktop thing. And so yeah, that's that's it for for this. And so now I can do a quick demo. It's going to be very quick because there's not much to show. Uh, just if you can bring bring up the screen train. Thank you. And here you go. This one is my recently uh, uh, received MacBook, uh, which is running so a very early, very preview uh, version of Fedora Kinoite, uh, which includes the Asahi packages, so the kernel, the Mesa stack, and uh, all those things running on Apple MacBook Pro, uh, an Apple M2 chip, which is it's a pretty beefy one here. And if you look at, say, the R premise three status, for example. So you can see here I'm running, I'm running directly from the container images. So an OS3 native container, putting the OS3 container to a container. Uh, and uh, yeah, I even tried Silver Blue, which works as well uh, perfectly. I haven't tried everything else, but yeah, it's uh, it's the ID. Uh, what did I want to show? You can get flat packs. Uh, the flat packs from Fedora are also available for your chassis 4. There's flat packs uh, available as well on FlatHub. You don't have everything for your chassis 4 on FlatHub, but a good bunch of them still are. At least for KDE application, I think we've got a pretty good bunch of them. And so things would be running pretty smoothly. Uh, so yeah, this is all coming. Um, soon quote unquote once we get the kiwi support uh working because that's like the prerequisite to get a better experience uh, for for folks uh, on food as i and all right that's it for me let's take a look at some questions yeah we've got quite a we've got four questions that i see here so far so far, they're all ranked the same. So we'll just go top to bottom. Uh, the first question comes from Christo. Uh, regarding the bootable containers initiative for someone with some experience in OS tree native containers, how would one go about getting an assignment or something like that to begin with, be it testing or some other area that needs involvement, either for atomic desktops, core OS, or IoT? Um, so assignment is strong word. Essentially, um, we we are getting this initiative started, and uh, so there's a lot of documentation available. If you want to take a look at bootable containers, I recommend you start with the documentation that is published right now as part of the federal docs uh, around uh, Bootsy. So uh, the the link is you can find the link uh, likely on the issue tracker or or close to that if you type Bootsy documentation, Fedora Bootsy documentation, and uh, I'll, I'll paste it in the chat. Uh, but yeah, there's a whole lot of content here. You can start with uh, that to get more familiar with the concepts of how things work, and then uh, yeah, that should give you a more concrete feeling of uh, of uh, of the projects, the goals. Uh, we have regular meetings as well. Right now, we're meeting two times a week uh, around uh, 2 p.m. UTC uh, on Tuesday and Thursday. And so, yeah, you can join us and see uh, if that matches what you want to do. Perfect. Next question here comes from David Duncan. Uh, that's interesting. So for DNF5, will, will there be... Uh, Will be there for Devel and non-essential packages only, or will it be there for general use too? So we're including DNF five. The goal is to include DNF five like fully, like the full DNF five. Uh, and so once you're running in 
the conventional mode, like when you have an atomic desktop and you're running it slash user is read only. So if you type DNF commands that try and install packages, they will fail essentially because they don't have access to slash user. They cannot change the content of the system. So once you unlock your system, once you had a writable uh, overlay on top of slash user. There's an RPM3 command for that. There's Bootsy one as well. It creates a temporary overlay on top of slash user. And then you can basically use DNF to do whatever you want to your system because it's temporary. Once you reboot, it's gone. You get back to the image uh, that is by default. And yeah, you can install everything. Uh, and I think like most packages will work. Uh, the only thing that's probably not going to work is everything kernel. Like if you install a new kernel, that's probably not going to work. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, I think that's that's mostly it. All all other packages should should just work. Perfect. All right, and we have probably time for just one more question before we we'll have the transition for our next one. Uh, this one's gotten an extra upvote, so we'll go with this question next from Joseph. Uh, uh, will more KDE gear apps be added to the Kinoite image itself, or is the goal for as many applications as is reasonable to live as flat packs installed out of the box? Also, how about installing things like LibreOffice as flat packs installed out of the box, similar to how Ublue is doing for Thunderbird? Yeah, so what we did in Fedora 40 is that we moved, uh, we added those application as flat packs. So the new ones that are installed by default are flat packs, Fedora flat packs. Um, so I don't think the set of application is going to change in Fedora Kinoi. Like we've got a set of like limited set of application that are truly critical for you to get uh, installed, including to a system so that like, whatever happens you miss install something you can still get a working browser a text editor essentially and a fire browser and everything else is a flat pack so you should anything else you want to include to your system install in your system should be should be a flat pack so i don't expect the more application to be to be included in Fedora you know, uh, anytime soon and it was compared to the question i think i missed um, part about installing things like LibreOffice as flat packs installed out of the box, similar to how Ublue is doing for Thunderbird. Yes, I would love to get LibreOffice installed by default, but it's quite a huge package. And so right now we're getting, we're limiting ourselves to KDE applications. Uh, so that's just one runtime, because the way the runtimes I made in Fedora, uh, it's slightly different from the way it's made on FatHub, and so it's not as efficient right now. So yeah, we're staying on KDE apps only and um, just uh, a small set of KDE apps. Everything is available just yeah from after the installation. You don't get it in, in the Anaconda one, in Anaconda ISO. Makes sense. Well, as we were talking, now there have been more questions that have flooded in. So you have about three or four more questions back in the thread. If you'd like to go back and take a look, definitely got a lot of enthusiasm for the atomic desktops, but we are at the end of the slot. So thank you, Timothy, for your overview on Fedora atomic desktops and what's new in this last release. And uh, thanks for being here on a Saturday to talk about Fedora atomic. Yeah. Thanks everyone. See you soon. Thanks, Justin, for having me.